everybody, this is Chuck Bartok from Orland, California. I'm out here visiting another neighbor, Bob White. Uh, Bob's been here at this location for quite a while and I don't know why I've missed stopping by. Uh, Bob has taken his passion of growing cherries and made it almost a full-time job. Bob, uh, this, is, uh, this is your cherry orchard and uh, obviously you're standing next to a young tree. Uh, how long have you been doing this, Bob? We've been putting cherries in now. We've had them about 14 years. We've been here 14. about 20 years, but 14 years in the cherry. Just out of curiosity, Bob, what prompted you? Obviously, you're you're a gentleman who's you're, you haven't always grown cherries. Oh no, no. And no. and uh, you do have some other business pursuits, don't you? Yes. So so you would call this a hobby, or not really a hobby? It's a business. It's kind of overcoming the hobby stage. Right. But but I mean, you had a passion for the fruit and found a market for it. Is that it? A niche right. market. Okay. So again, you're, you're an example, just like our neighbor, the Ericsons, and myself with vegetables. Uh, we enjoy doing something, and we found a, a place for our, ho our passion. We want, don't want to use the word hobby because it is a business. Uh, these are young trees. Is, is this a specific variety, Bob? Yeah, this is a sweetheart variety. They're on a Gazela 12 rootstock, which is a dwarfing rootstock. This particular tree is a very late variety. It comes in about 10 to 12 days after it being, and it is a self-pollinating variety. Oh, so you don't need the male and female tree right. then. Okay. And this will be strictly for farmer's markets. Aha. Uh -huh. is, is this considered a fresh cherry or a pie cherry? It's definitely a fresh cherry. I've got all sweet cherries here. No okay, cherries. you don't have the pie cherry, which I miss our two uh, Queen Anne's that we had at the ranch for such a long time. And every year we stripped those trees and had some great pies. So back here behind us, Bob, we have some older, older trees, obviously, and uh, you have many varieties in here. Is that correct? There's two varieties out here primarily. We've got both a Brooks and a Tulare. They tend to be a little earlier than the Bing cherry. The Brooks are planted for pollinators in amongst the Tulare trees. Uh, the Tularies are non-susceptible to rain cracking. That's why we planted them in this area and chose these. Okay. Uh, Brooks cherry, however, is very susceptible to rain cracking. But and the timing is right for the tularies. Right, and tulare is a fairly new uh, new variety, isn't it? It is fairly new out in comparison to the beans. Okay, so. right here, I'm going to try to get in. Uh, there's still a cherry. Oh, that's an old dried cherry, right? Yeah, now this is see the rain crack. This is the one. This is a Brooks. So these are the ones that are very susceptible to the rain cracks. So all these cherries were ruined. Okay. You can, see, you can see where they cracked on the bottom. Right. And the pit showing. So this variety, we had about 80% uh, loss on this variety. Holy cow. Because we had an unseasonable rain, is that Season true? rain, yeah. We just yeah. got the rain at the wrong time for this right. variety. Right. And you can see the cracks in the bottom of the cherries. So right. Okay, okay, so this is the, the Brooks, correct? This is the Brooks variety. That's now, correct. I'm going to shut the camera off and we're going to walk over. Is there any difference in the tree, uh, the look of the tree between the Brook and the Tulare? No, not so no? you notice. Well, you know, one thing I'm going to do, uh, we're going to walk up in front because when I drove in today, I saw something very unique I'd like you to share with us. Sure.